Amen. Happy Sunday. Welcome to church. It's good to have everyone in church this morning. We thank God for the privilege to be in His presence. Glory to Jesus. Some people are not in church. We trust God that they are fine. So just wherever I can check on or call. I mean call. When I say check on, they have to go to their house. Just call to find out why they were not in church. Praise Jesus forevermore. You see, anytime the children leave, it always exposes that we are not working. Now we have a lot of work to do as elders. When the children were here, I think we were men. <laughs> Guys, we have work to do. We have what? In this sense, we have what? What's the work we have to do? We have to bring people. You know it's your work, right? Let me see. It's your work, right? Ah, it's our work. We have a lot of work to do. We have to keep preaching the gospel of the Lord. Keep preaching Jesus. Keep inviting people. Keep showing people love. Keep living the life that I want to make them come to your church. Are you following? We'll keep praying, but we have to keep also doing the work. We have to go out, invite people to church. And don't mind, some people already have a church, are you with me? But sometimes, God is already leading them. If you don't, it's an, it's an invitation, you're not forcing. When they come, they will decide. Are you following me? Ah, a lot of us, did we know actually we were going before God told us to join another church? So God always, God can lead us like that. So speak to people, invite them to church. Don't say this, my friend, already has a church. Now your friend might be experiencing dryness in, in the church he or she is. Might not be experiencing God at all. Are you following me? And for, for God, church is not just about, I'm going to church on Sunday or week or during the midweek services. Are you following me? It's about experiencing him, experiencing his life. And experiencing his family, the family he has given you. So many people are in church, as it were, but they don't have the real experience of church. Are you following me? So people are even tired of going to church. Because hmm? there's no flow, there, there's no life. So you have to keep talking to people, preach to unbelievers, bring them to church. Even those who are Christians who are born again. Some Christians are not going to church, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, are there not some of our members in the house today? Uh, some people have not come for like one month, two months. We don't know if they are still our members. <laughs> Praise Jesus, forevermore. Shout hallelujah. And we've met, while we were going on evangelism, we met people where, some of our members were people who were not going to church before. So it's like they've not been completely healed of that disease. When we met them, was it two years ago or so? They were not going to church. Any, they, were, they had gone to church before <laughs> and they've stopped going for many years. So God helped them. They came here. But they've not been completely healed. That's why they don't come sometimes. Praise Jesus. What's the point here? We have a lot of work to do. Preach to people, get people saved, bring them to church, fill them with the Spirit of God, and invite even your Christians, your Christian friends. Uh, some of them are not going to church, and some of them are going to church where they are not finding God. Their heart is longing for God, but they can't find God. Hmm? Praise Jesus. And some of them have a witness, but the witness, what they need for that conviction is your invitation. Are, are we together? If you don't invite some people, they won't. So if I just wait for a day, you will just invite them. I'm telling you the truth. To come to your church. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. If not welcome someone, can you welcome someone to church? If not welcome someone to church, just look around. Welcome someone to church. Church is not Shadura Shami. Welcome, son. Are you happy to see your sisters and your brothers? I'm happy to see the people of God. Praise Jesus forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My sister, what is your name? Grace. You are from which state? Ekiti. You do attend the extra. Uh, wow. What's your real name? What's your real name? Don't miss me. Which one do you like? Is it Tommy Singh or Grace? The two. Tommy Singh. She'll be calling you Tommy Singh Grace. Which one should we be calling you as a member of this church? Anyone we like? Tommy Singh. Tommy. Tommy. Grace. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in church. Thank God for such great privilege. Okay, let's go straight into the word of God. And it will be a great day 
Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for the privilege of coming for your presence this morning. Thank you for making us your people. A people after your heart. Your own special people. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the privilege of having a family, a church family, being part of your family on earth. Oh, what other honor can we have apart from this? We are grateful. Father, we ask this morning that you speak to us. Let your word be clear. Let your counsel come to us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name of prayer. Praise Jesus. So we've been on a series, Financial Freedom. Amen. Even though I paused for two weeks, last week and two weeks ago, I looked at Blessed is the Man, and it's just an amazing conversation. Blessed is the Man, part one and two. So you can just go to our platforms, social media platforms on Telegram, Facebook, YouTube. Just search for Glory Center Community Church in Gondo. you see our teachings there, and you'll be so blessed by them. Share them with people, listen to them. There are more than 100, over 200 teachings there. So you have enough materials for Bible study to just listen and understand God's plan for your life. Praise Jesus. So we're looking at financial freedom. How that the plan of God for you as a child is the plan of prosperity. Are you with me? That God does not have the plan of poverty for you. Suffering is not part of God's plan for your life. Hmm? You, don't have, you don't have to suffer before you can walk with Jesus. Walking with Jesus does not equate poverty or suffering. But if you truly want to walk with Jesus and live your holy life, oh, you can't, you can't be wealthy. It's not true. That is not the mind of God. Are you following me? And the elder began to show us the mind of God. He says, I wish above all else that thou mayest prosper and be in earth, even as your soul prospers. Amen. And we're looking at the fact, this is a long series already, so we've gone so far. Amen. So we're looking at the fact that in the, in the kingdom of God, because we are in the kingdom of God, are you following me? And the church, your local church, is your contact with God's kingdom on earth. So you can't be a Christian and say, I just want kingdom, I don't want, any, I don't want to have anything to do with church. It's not true. God's kingdom, the way you can contact, access God's kingdom, if you are still in this earth, is where? It's the church, your local church. You can't say you want to stay in the room, be on the mountain and be praying alone, be speaking in tongues, listening to messages, you don't need a church. It's not true. You will wreck your life. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. He says, in the midst of the people who like praise you, in the midst of the church. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, God's plan for us is a plan of what? Abundance. It's a plan of prosperity. Amen. And I was saying to you that in the kingdom of God, praise Jesus, prosperity responds to principle. Hmm? Prosperity does what? respond to principles because you see many times christians we love to deceive ourselves say there's a pro there, there, there's one conference somewhere there's one crusade we want to pray pray for seven days to receive prosperity whereas you go ahead to pray for seven days to receive prosperity but you're a stingy person can i even give your brother and sister something you can't share with your brothers and sisters are you following me you don't give, you are not committed to your church in any way. Your time, your energy, your resources, no commitment. And you say you want to go and pray for blessing. It's not true. It doesn't work that way. And I thought this is the reason why many Christians have been praying for many years. Huh? And they are still poor. They are still in the same state. You know, I tell you that, well, all these prayers don't work, Jerry. <laughs> are you following me? Because actually the prayers don't work. If you are not practicing the principles, are you with me? The prayers what? The prayers don't work if you are not practicing the principles. What gives energy to your prayers for blessings, for the blessings of God, for His prosperity, is that you are practicing the kingdom principles for prosperity. Are you following me? So we have many people who pray for prosperity, but few practitioners of the kingdom principles for prosperity. Uh, 
So we have many prayers. Pray he, prayers. You understand? But we have few practitioners. So it now looks as if God is a liar. As if God. So people now say, hey, bro, man, no, church, no, 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 no. You are always going for programs. Why is your God not blessing you? Because he can't bless you. God does not have plans to bless those who can pray the most. Are you with me? Can you hear me? It's not in God's plan. Now, okay, who can pray the most? Okay, see this guy. Ah, can pray for 40 hours in a day. Out of 24 hours, he pray for 40 hours. He's not going to bless But It's not true. God blesses. Are you following me? God's plan for prosperity is for those who practice the kingdom principles for prosperity. Those who are practitioners. Are you, are you with me now, my friends? So I've been talking to you about the different principles for financial freedom, for prosperity. And I spoke, with, I spoke to you, the first thing I told you, the first principle, I, I taught you, not as though in numbering, I mean, in order like the order of priority, just in numbering. Huh? So the first principle I, principle I taught you is the, is the principle of labor. Right? This principle of what? That God cannot bless a lazy man. Hmm? God cannot do what? You know some Christians are lazy. Are you following me? They have nothing they are doing. They don't want to upgrade their skills. They don't want to go to school. They don't want to do business. They, are just, they just want God to just send manna. God doesn't send manna again. If I sent manna only once in the experience of the children of Israel, are you following me? It's just once, that once experience. Are you following me? He fed them for 40 years. It's only those people he sent manna to. You have to be hard working. God has to, you see, labor, hard work, and I've told you hard work is not hustling. Are you following me? Hustling is the English name. Are you following me? To you, is the English, is, is the cloth, is the garment you have put on the fact that I'm still living under the curse. Are you with me? Because in Genesis chapter 3, when God was speaking to man, he said, out of your sweat shall you eat bread. Tons and tissues shall it bring forth for you. That was a curse. Are you following me? Because that was not the status quo. That was not the way things were. But because of the fall, are you following me? Man's, man's route to increase, man's route to prosperity as it were, was tampered with. Are you with me? And on to Adam he said, because thou hast acting on the voice of the wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, that shall not eat, cause it, that shall not eat of it, cost is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Uh-huh. Verse 18. Look at it. Tons also and tissues shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So you see, no matter how much man tries, if he does not, if he's not liberated from this cause, no matter how much he thinks he's prospering, the Bible says what he's having is tongues and teasers. Uh, out of your sweat shall you eat. Are you following me? So, onslaught is an English word for all of this, all of this statement. Are you with me? Onslaught is what? Us, and in the sweat of thy face shall you eat bread. In the sweat of your face. That was not the original design. In the original design, God had made, a, made the garden, created everything man needed, right? Man was put into luxury, into pleasure, plenty. That's the design. But you still find the principle of hard work from that, even from that place, chapter 2. He said God put him into the garden to tend it and to keep it. That is hard work. Because you see, that's why God cannot bless you if you're not hard working, because you, you will waste it. You'll be wasteful. Are you with me? You'll be what? You'll be wasteful. So even though God had made everything ready for Adam and God put him, God still introduced the principle of what? Hard work. Tend the garden and keep it. Tend it and keep it be hard working. Manage these resources properly. Are you following me? So if you are lazy, God cannot give, God cannot give you money. You go ahead and pray for money. God, miracle money. No miracle money anywhere. It's a lie. Are you following me? You're wasting your time. Praise Jesus. So I said that hard working and hustling are not the same. Hustling is... Are you following me? From verse 17. Hustling is Genesis. Hustling is the English, is the one word. Are you following me? 
Unslin is one is the one English word for Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Are you following me? They've compressed is it is Genesis 7, chapter 3, 17 to 19 compressed into one word. You know, sometimes you are reading a comprehension and all that. It's okay. In one word. <laughs> are you following me? So Oslin is the summary of a life that is under a curse. So you are not hustling. Are you following me? Hard working is God's own principle. God works. God is hard working. That's why you are saved. That's why you are still saved. That's why you are continuing the faith. That's why sometimes you feel like you, 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 you mess up. You are still able to return because he comes looking for you. It's hard working. Are you following me? And the Bible teaches hard work. Are you following me? So the first principle for prosperity, as I taught you, is the principle of labor. You must be hard working. Are you following me? You see, labor is you telling God that he has a reason to bless you. Hmm? You see, God has no reason to bless you if you are not hard working. Because what does he want to bless? He says, I'm going to bless your bread and your water. I will bless the works of your hands. Are you with me? So what if there's no work in your hand? Nothing to bless. What God wants to bless his work is the work of your hands. The way God wants to bless you is through the work of your hands. So you have to be what? Hard working. That is a serious principle that many believers don't even live by. We now, we, instead of hard work, are you following me? Want to be in church for 24 hours. <laughs> are you following me? Want to attend all the conferences. Oh, there's, there's, there's apostles so, 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 and so coming to this place. You're, there's a skill you don't know yet. You always say, Bro, is it okay? the long Can I get to another? You don't plan to learn a skill. You don't plan to upgrade. But you're always planning to. And that one you want to collect is to enter motor to go and listen to apostles. So, 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 and so. You're always going to listen to all the apostles. Ah, you say, ah, if you hear the rev, where that man is here. Rev will not give you pros. It will not bring you blessing. You are wasting your time. Because Christians, we love to waste our time and deceive ourselves. You think it is by attending many programs, God will now change his mind and bless you? So you see, many times we spiritualize laziness and stupidity. Are you following me? We spiritualize it. That, ah, I'm always in church praying. I'm always in church praying. You can always be. You, you can always be. In, I mean, even as a church, a whole church, how many times do we miss in a week? You that you are not church. Only you. <laughs> You're always, are you with me? Like, what are you doing? What was it? God is asking you. Even when you're saying, God, the angel of prosperity, send him, send him. Don't say, guy, come, come. What are you doing? What do you need to do? What do you go bless? Are you following me? If even the widow, are you following me? The widow that her husband died. Are you with me? When she spoke to the prophet Elijah, to show that there's no manner that will come, he said, what do you have? Is that not what he asked her? What do you have? He said, what do you have? Because you see, there must be something you have that God can place his blessing on. What do you have? Kiloni? What are you doing? Are you going to school? Are you learning a course? Are you learning a trade? Are you upgrading your skill? What are you doing? She said, I have nothing save a pot of oil. Uh oh, uh, you have some save a pot of oil. She said, save. You know, the way she did it, uh, only have, I have nothing. Eh? Save a pot of oil. Like, what do I want to do with a pot of oil with all this basin on ground? Are you following me? But God, what? what God, praise Jesus. Is that my cough? Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Save what? A pot of oil. Amen. Praise Jesus. If you're already a millionaire, God does not need to make you a millionaire. So some of, some of us think God will bless us based on how much we already have. So the woman was almost despising what she had. That is not enough to bring prosperity. But Elijah said, you have a pot of oil. Wow, you have a lot. So some of you think what you're doing, your skill, your job, your business, whatever you're doing, you think it's too small that it can't bring prosperity. You're lying. What you need is God's blessings on it. If you look at the woman's language, she despised. That there, there are a lot of deaths on ground. They've come to take my children, all of that. 
he had, what do I have? Nothing but a pot of oil. That means that in, this, in this conversation, a pot of oil is nothing. Are you following me? But a pot of oil is not nothing when God puts his blessing on it. So God needs something, no matter how little it is, to put his blessing on. Are you with me? So he told her, go and borrow vessels abroad. Not a few. Not a few. They began to pour the oil. Shut the door, pour the oil, and sell them. Is that not hard work? Is that not hard work? Sell them, pay all your debts, eh? and you and your children live on the, on the remaining. It must have been a lot of money they made from that business. So they started oil factory. An oil factory. That is hard work. See how God blessed them. Are we together now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. So guys, you must be hardworking. Then we'll move to the principle of giving, right? We talked about the principle of giving, where you see, if you're not a giver, God has no plans to bless you. God has no plans to bless you. Some Christians don't know how to give. They don't know how to give. You must know how to give. You must learn how to give. Giving is a major route. It's the major route to prosperity. Are you following me? Giving is what? The major route to prosperity in this kingdom. In economies, are you following me? The professors of economy will tell you savings and investment, right? Is the route for you to have financial freedom. But in the kingdom, are you following me? Giving is what? Is the route to prosperity. I said about 90% of the principles for prosperity in the kingdom is what? Giving. You have to learn how to give. If you are not a giver, God cannot bless you. Amen. And I said, what do you give to? You give to the poor and the needy? You give to your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Amen. Then we are looking at the principle of honor. The principle of honor. Amen. The principle of honor. Praise Jesus forevermore. I said this principle of honor is still given, but I decided to call it honor because it's an higher level of giving. Praise is what? I don't want to call it giving as other givings because it's an higher level of giving. Mm -hmm. So the principle of honor. So I began to look at stuff. You can go and listen to it, everything. Just go and look for financial freedom on on our social media platform. You'll find all of these things. So the principle of honor. So I said one of the ways to To honor God, are you following me? One of the subsets of this principle of honor is offerings. Offerings. Hmm? So you give offerings to the Lord. You give offerings to the Lord. And I taught you how to give an offering to the Lord, blah, 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 and all of that. Just go and listen to everything. So we are present on the principle of commitment. And we've also gone so far in this. The principle of commitment. And what, what did I say the principle of commitment is? I said the principle of commitment is you committing your resources to the development of your local church. Are you following me? This is different from your normal tithes and offerings. Some Christians even still st- struggle with tithes and offerings. They still struggle with, tithe, with offerings, not to talk of tithes. Are you following me? But, it, but, they, but in honoring the Lord with our resources, there are different levels. Are you following me? So I said commitment is a great principle of honor for the Lord. And this commitment involves you committing your resources. Are you following me? To the development of your local church. Now, okay, we need to buy a keyboard. We want to buy this. We want to buy that. We need to purchase the properties and all of that. So you are deliberately giving out your resources to church. Are you following me? It's deliberate because you want the church to what? To develop. Praise Jesus. And I've told you a lot about this. Can we move on today? Okay, so open to Exodus again. Let's continue. Uh, praise Jesus. Just read from verse 8. Let us read everything. It's 1 to 9 that we're looking at for the study. But let's read 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Uh huh. Verse 9. According to all that I showed you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make picks. Amen. So I began to talk to you from this scripture. We've gone so far about the vision, about it, the local church and the vision in the heart of its pastor. Right? That God always has a vision for a church. 
which he put in the heart of the pastor, right? Uh, the last time we looked at this teaching, that was three weeks ago, what I taught you was about casting the vision. That the pastor now begins to speak the vision to the children of God, to the church members. Are you following me? Because even though the pastor is the one who receives the vision, the vision is to be bettered by the members of the church. Are you following me? Because they are important. Can you say, I am, I am important? In your local church, you are what? You are important. You see, and I talk to you, without you, are you following me? Without you playing your part, your local church cannot become all that God wants it to be. Hmm? You see, what a local church will become is not all in the hand of the pastor. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. In fact, a lot, a lot of what the church, what the local church will become depends a lot on the members. The work of the pastor is to receive the vision from the Lord and cast it upon the members. It's for the members to go ahead and build the sanctuary. Are you following me? Moses received the pattern, received the vision for the work, but who was going to make it? Let them, the children of God, the people began to build. They began to bring their resources. That's Exodus 25 from verse 1 to 9, also 36. So they began to bring their wealth, their resources, and they also began to do the work. So I told you, if you don't do the work, your pastor can also not do his work. He can't receive the vision from God. So you have to do the work. Are you following me? How much energy you put into the work as members of the church, are you following me, determines how much your church will grow. Are you with me now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. So God is count, and I mean grow in every area, in numbers, in wealth, in every area. Are you following me? How much effort you put into it determines how much it will grow. So God is counting on you, the members. The work of your pastor majorly is to catch the vision, put the vision into your heart, and train you on how to fulfill the vision of God. Are you with me now, my friends? So I told you that as, that's why you see, you don't attend a church. You are part of a church. It's not the church I'm attending. If you are attending, one day you will soon leave. <laughs> are you following me? Because if you, are, if you are an attending, one day you might get tired of attending. Or, or you are offended. Something offends you. And you want to leave. Because you are mainly attending. You are not a member. You are not a part. How many times in your Barrica family, can you, how many of you can count how many times your siblings or your parents have offended you? How many of you can count? You've lost count. You've lost count, right? Abby, you've lost count. Or they've not offended you before in your family. They still offended you this past week. Abby. Are you too used to offend in your political family? But how many times have you left your family? That whole oh, family, no, she family, I mean, I'm not part of family again. I'm not part of Kosoko's family. Kosoko, I'm no longer, I'm Kosoko. That whole, oh, you now left your family, you now went to knock at another door. Somebody's family. You, you're allowed to enjoy your family. Now I went to another street or even on the same street. Go, 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 go. Oh, Nelson. Me, I've left those stupid or that I've left their family. I'm now part of your family. <laughs> They'll follow for a rope to tie you. That would have been. Scott, and go to you, worry, worry. You have never left your family before with all the way your mom dealt with you, your dad dealt with you. With all the way your sister will abuse you. Are you with me? Sometimes you, some, you felt before that, ah, God, why did you even put me in this family? You've thought, you've, some of us, many of us have thought like that before. But you've never left. Your family will go, why long God take what he got? Why long Is that not true? I, have you not thought like that before? Ah, why did God even put me in this family? Self? The one I said is too much. But you've not what? You've not left. How many of you have left your family? That you're not part of that family again. That you've, your record has been erased. You're not there again. None of you. You know why? Because you are not attending your family. You are a member. You are part of it. And you see, no matter how badly your family behaves to you, because you are a child of that family, are you following me? You still defend them against the attacks of, of outsiders. In your eyes, the family is, your family is the best family. Is that not true? If they are talking ill, Ill of your family, you want to fight. 
Eh? Nobody just insult. Is a bastard that they insult his, his family in his face and he's joining them. Are you with me? So in a, in a local church, are you following me? Is God's family on it? I told you. His family is not attending. It's not, it's not an organization in that sense. It's family. So you must, stop, you must stop attending church. You must decide to be part of church. Are you with me? You are not an attendee. Are you catching cold? Can they take out the fan? That's the one closest to her. Amen. Praise Jesus. You can take this one out too. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. He said, I'm a good father, I'm a good pastor. I used to observe everything. That's his, son, his family. <laughs> I'm, I'm not just concerned about my preaching. It's not, prof- it's not professional preaching. You see, you know if you're doing, if you're doing professional preaching, that's what you will not, you'll be careful, you will not want to enter the message. These are, they will not edit these things I'm saying to be part of the message. Because I'm talking to my family members. If you go to our channel and listen, is it that way to find trouble? Anything you see there, you collect it like that. We didn't invite you to come. Out. Are you with me? <laughs> Praise Jesus. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Like we're not doing anything. We're not doing professional. We're not doing... It's not, it's not a bank. It's family. When you're just in your family, when you're talking to your family, do you, do you cram what you want to say? Do you plan your words in advance? You just... So church is family, right? So you must make a resolve to be part of your church. You're not attending. If you're part, it means you're part. You are what? You are part. I'm not attending. And at, atten, attendees will leave eventually. I'm telling you the truth. Judas was attending Jesus' t- church. He was an attendee. <laughs> are you following me? Even though they made him an apostle, he was, he was an attendee. His heart did not change. You see, if you are a member of the family, your heart is there. Your life is there. It's your life. It means everything to you. It's the best. It's the best. Your family is the best. No family like your family on earth. Are you with me? Your father might not be as wealthy as the, as the other man down the street, but your father is the best. You love your father. You love him. Are you with me? Praise Jesus forevermore. So you see, church is family. So and God has entrusted us, the members of that family, to develop our church to commit ourselves our resources are you following me towards the fulfillment of the vision he has put in the heart of the pastor are we together now shout hallelujah you see because you see if you don't commit yourself your resources into your local church are you following me the vision in the pastor's heart will merely be a vision it will not come to fulfillment so you are the key to the vision in the art, to the fulfillment of the vision in the heart of your pastor. You see, if there's any vision God puts in my heart for this church, I can't fulfill it myself. That's why I keep talking to you about it. I keep talking to you about it. Talk to the leaders, talk to the members when I'm preaching. I keep talking. For example, I told you we'll soon buy this property. No, we don't have money in our account. And that's how we, that's how we, get, we got the drugs. That's how we got the microphone. You don't have money. Are you following me? But because a people are passionate to get the work done. Are you with me? And we must apply this passion in every area, in every sense of the work. In your giving, in your commitment, in everything. In getting people to church. You see, you can give yourself a tax that, okay, every month, one person will join church because of me. Even if it's one. At least one person will join church because of me. Even, you can give yourself that task. Are you with me now, my friends? So, you are the vehicle, you are the key to the fulfillment of the vision that God has put in the path of your pastor for the church. Are we together? I want to show you something very, very important this morning, which we must take note of. Amen. Now, look at it. According to all that I showed you, after verse 8 and 9 together, Amen. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I shield thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. 
and the pattern of all the instruments, therefore, even so shall ye make it. Amen. Praise Jesus. I'm trusting God to finish this Exodus 25 today. This is, the, this is the last thing I want to say. I mean, this is the last point I want to teach. What I want to teach today. This is the last point I want to teach from this scripture. But I can't finish today. I'll continue next by God's grace. But I, want to, I trust God to finish God. Okay, 10, 18. Praise Jesus. You know, our close, our close time is 11.30. It's not that I used to pity you people. I used to let you go by 11. But it's 11.30. Have you forgotten? It's 8 to 11.30. But I've spoiled you. I used to let you go by. Sometimes I'll finish by 10.30 to 11 or 11. It's once in a while that I went past 11, 11 30. Amen. I don't understand. What are, you, what are you thinking? Oh, you're already used to 10 30, 10 45, 11. I'll spot you. I'll spot you. Don't worry today. Let's see how. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we enter our original closing time. Oh. Don't worry. But I won't rush. Don't worry. If I can't finish today, I'll continue next week by God's grace. So don't be afraid. Amen. Praise Jesus. This is so important. What did God say they should make? I can't hear you. So the vision that God put in the heart of Moses for that church, are you following me, is the building of a sanctuary. And don't forget, it was, he began to talk to people about it. That is casting the vision as I taught you three weeks ago, right? Now what he was telling the people to build for God was a sanctuary hmm? was what a sanctuary now can i make you know something you can do a search in your scripture in your bible no sanctuary existed in the earth at this time the first time the word sanctuary was mentioned in the scripture was chapter 15 of exodus go to chapter 15 and it was moses that said it when he was recounting the deliverance of God, how God de- delivered them. You can search your Bible. This is, this is a Bible church. You have to be educated in the scriptures. You can search. You can just, just search your Bible for sanctuary. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Have you searched? You will only find... The first person that was mentioned was chapter 15, verse, where is it? Who has seen it? Verse 17. That's the first person that was mentioned. Are you following me? That's the first place. Exodus 15, 17 is the first place sanctuary was mentioned. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? It's okay, don't search again. You can go, I'm correct. Don't worry. I'm, I'm a sound pastor. Now. Yeah, I, I, I don't worry. Here. <laughs> That's the first thing it was mentioned. Are you following me? And even this mention, I don't want to go, I don't want to stay on this scripture. If you read from verse 1, Moses was singing and praising the Lord for delivering them from Egypt. Are you with me? Now, even this scripture, chapter 15 of Exodus, is more of a prophetic scripture, it's prophetic in nature. So even the use of the word sanctuary here, are you following me? Let's read it. Thou shalt bring them in, Exodus 15, 17. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands hath established. Which thy hands what? Hath. Is it will? Which thy hands hath established. Hold on. Are you following me? Moses was not the first man to live on to live on it. Adam, Abraham, a lot of people had lived before him, but we never saw sanctuary. If you say which hands have established, if this stanza you're talking about is an earthly sanctuary, we should have found, we should have traced it to places before chapter 15 where men use sanctuary. Now, this is a prophetic scripture, and I'm not interested in going into it. Are you following me? So here yeah, Moses was singing to the Lord about his deliverance and was talking about how that, I don't, I, I don't want to go into the prophetic dimension of this scripture, but Moses was talking about God's presence here, about how God would bring the people into his presence, into his own very presence. At this point, even though Moses used the word sanctuary, no sanctuary existed on it. Do you appreciate that? 
Do you understand? Moses had never seen a sanctuary before, at least on earth. Are we still together? So there's no, no sanctuary has existed what? Before. No, san- no sanctuary. In fact, no word sanctuary before this chapter 15 verse 17. Moses was even the first to use it in the scripture. It's prophetic. And he saw something in the spirit. Are we together? So run again to chapter 25 verse 8 and 9. So, and let them, now this is, who, who is speaking here now? God. And let them make me a sanctuary according to all that I should do. So God is now saying what? Let them make me a sanctuary. So, the first time we see the idea of a sanctuary coming, existing on earth, is where? Chapter 25. Are you getting it now? I'm going somewhere. Are you getting it now? The first time we see what? The idea of a sanctuary existing on earth. The first time we see the idea of a sanctuary being physical, coming to physical manifestation, existing at all, having a form in the earth, is chapter what? 25. So before now, hmm, don't forget, the first mention of sanctuary is chapter 15. But the first mention of how that the sanctuary will now exist on earth is chapter 25. So we can, of, of course, they finished the sanctuary in, in chapter 36 or so. That was when they completed it. It took them nine chapters or so to complete it, to, to complete the sanctuary. But let's, let's just, let's summarize that the first existence of a sanctuary on earth is what? Chapter 25, right? Existence of a sanctuary. Not the mention. Are you, are we, are you following me? This chapter what? Awesome. And let them make me a sanctuary according to all that I have shown you. Are you following me? This is a serious work. God has put Moses in trouble. He was calling them to build what they've never seen before. What did not exist before. What are they as up to that time? In all the years that it has been existing, what has never existed? What does not exist? This is serious. Work. Are you following me? And this is the vision that God put in Moses' heart. Are you following me, my friends? Are you following me, my friends? Praise God. You see, this sanctuary, uh, the existence of a sanctuary, a physical sanctuary on earth, this thing that God has called Moses to do, has no reference point. You understand me? It's not like he has in a sanctuary, so and say, oh, let me also do it like that. Let me build what they built. It adds what? No reference point. So, this vision has no reference point. It had never... I think I'll, I'll just lay a foundation. I'll just lay a foundation today then. I'll really talk about it next week. What's the time? Don't worry, I'll finish by 11. Maybe 5 or 10 minutes past 11. Amen. Shout hallelujah. I, I really wanted to get these things. Because I'm going to talk about you too. I think when, I'm, when I'm teaching you, when I, even when I'm thinking about the church, I also think, think about you, your life. Are you with me? So this thing that God has called Moses to do, that he has called that church to do, are you following me? That he has called those people to do, as what? No reference point. They will be the first that will what? That will do it. Hey, friends, are you ready? This means that in executing this vision of God that God has given them, they will be different. Is that true? There will be what? People might be saying, you know, it is in God, you have to buy. Hey, you see, don't worry, don't let me rush. That is one of the ways the enemy tries to push you away from the vision God has given you. Because, you see, when God gives you a vision, sometimes it makes you, it puts you on a path of difference. And if you are afraid to be different, are you following me? You will soon, the enemy will soon hijack the vision from you. Hey, friends, can you hear me? Hmm? Guys, can I talk to you? You must not be afraid of difference, to be different. Because a lot of the, a lot of the things God will call you, call you to do would have no reference point. I follow now, my friends. Are we still together? 
So people say, why is your own different self? Why is your own different? And because you're already afraid, that, ah, am I different? Oh, no, I'm not different. I'm like you people. See, if you try to be like you people, you are afraid of difference. You can't fulfill destiny. I've not even gotten there yet. Let's talk about the church. Amen. So, sometimes, don't forget, Moses was the pastor of this church. Uh, and God put a vision in his heart for that church, which he began to speak to the people about. But this vision was a vision, are you following me? Thou puts Moses and his people in trouble before other people. Because what he wanted to do has no reference point on it. It has what? No reference point on it. Nobody had done it before. Are we ready now? So, sometimes the vision God puts in the art of your pastor is unique. And has no reference point. Are you following me? Sometimes what? The vision God puts in the art of your pastor is unique. And has no reference point. Are with me now, my friends? Guys, we must not be afraid of difference. You see, sometimes you are afraid to be different because you want acceptance. You think acceptance is equal to fulfillment of destiny. No! Are you following me? You think what? Acceptance is equal to what? Fulfillment of destiny. That the more people are accepting, the more I fulfill my destiny. It's not true. Are you following me? You see, if you're not even careful, acceptance will take away destiny from you. Are you following me? Because many times, destiny makes you different. Uh, destiny makes you what? Different. Destiny puts you... Oh, friends, are you with me? Destiny puts you on a path of difference. Hmm? So the enemy comes to attack that difference because he wants to attack destiny. Are you following me? So people are saying, your own is too much. Eh? Is the only that to have first class name? Is that why you don't even talk to us? Is that why you don't spend a lot of time with us? Eh? Is it only your church that knows God? You people come to church Sunday morning, you come Sunday evening, you okay, don't worry. Is it only your church? You'll be singing something that people don't know, that, that, that people don't know. Somebody has told me, somebody has told me, I'm telling you the truth. That, ah, she was telling me as she was advising that, ah, pastor, church in Kiniko, that, ah. I want to man I want to young more. As if we should be singing the song, you know. What can I, what can I the song, you know? We're talking about the song that will exalt the Lord. All the songs we now know, the Kabi or Siba, but did, did we know them before? Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Was there no idea you had it for the first time? Did you know them before? So what problem with song we don't know? Some you don't know, you will learn it and know it. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I didn't even, I, I, I've forgotten the way she said it. I didn't, I didn't explain to you very well. It was like a subtle attack. That somebody was complaining that, she, okay, that, okay, the person was telling one mama that this man, she doesn't, maybe she doesn't come to church. I don't even understand the rubbish she was saying that. And she, the song we used to sing that, she doesn't even know the song that, I love that. So as if that's the, as if it's an indictment on us. So my mother was now telling me that, ah, our song, that she said, she knows the conscious because she knows know the song. I said, if you all know the song, maybe, maybe you go conscious. <laughs> Are you with me? So it was just, it was just a subtle indictment, an attack. Are you following me? Are you with me? Praise Jesus. So you see, if you... If you want acceptance, uh, you won't fulfill destiny. You won't be able to accept you. You won't fulfill destiny. Because you see, a man who has chosen to be different, are you following me? Has chosen the path of difference. Are you following me? You see, and I'm not talking of the difference you, you carve for yourself. Because some of us love to just be unnecessarily mysterious. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to say. You just want to be different. No, I'm not talking of that difference. I'm talking of the difference God himself gave you. Because you see, it was God that was giving this church. Moses the pastor and his people and his church. It was God that was setting them on this part of difference. It's God that, it's God that was putting them, putting them in trouble with the people. 
Why is your church always like this? Why, why are you people like this? Why do I have to be very committed if I'm going to be part of the workforce? Why, why, why should I? Why? Can't I just freestyle? You can't freestyle. It's not a freestyle church. Even as a member, who is truly a member, there's a way you are. There's a way you must be. There's a way the, there's a culture. It's culture we are talking about. Is it only your church? Are you them alone? Is it only? Are we, are we still together? So, the path of destiny is a part of what? Difference. The path of difference. So, God began to put Moses and his people in trouble when he began to give them a vision that had no reference point. A vision that what? That had no reference point. No reference point. Nobody has ever built a sanctuary before. Maybe if God had called him to build another ark, maybe it would have made sense. <laughs> Do you understand? Uh, because, okay, ark, uh, somebody has built an ark before. You know when God told Noah how to build, uh, build an ark, there was no ark before. Hey, friends, can you hear me? Destiny requires difference. In fact, destiny is difference. The part of destiny is the part of difference. So you want to be like all your friends. You want, you want all your friends to love you, accept you. You are not ready for life. I'm not ready. Are you following me? So, we are trying to do church in a way that just, there are many people just rushing. I'm not ready for God. You see, we are doing our church, this church, we are doing church in a way that God will rush in. <laughs> are you following me? That His presence will be so evident. Can I tell you the truth? And when God rushes in, eventually the people will rush in. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You see, when you are walking in the path of destiny, which is the path of difference, are you following me? You might appear to be lonely. Nobody wants to share with you. It's just only you, you are smart, and all of that. Can you hear me? But eventually, if you successfully walk that path, everybody wants to associate with you. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you this. I've been telling you about this church. Oh. This is a mega church. Oh. Forget what you are saying. Oh. A day is coming. Are you hearing me? I will want to do workers' meeting. All of this place is not enough. Want to do, we want to do workers. It's just workers meeting we want to do. It's not enough. These are things we've seen a lot has told us. And that's why we keep working out. We are not discouraged. And that's why we are doing church the way we are doing it. Because the things we are seeing that God is showing us, only God can bring it to pass. Are you with me? We are going to have members in thousands who will be on fire for the Lord. Not a cold, dead church. And people are just doing religion. You don't know it's possible to have a church of multitude and they are on fire. Is it not an act of apostles? You think they were called? They needed people to just serve bread, serve tables. See the criteria. Are you following me? Men who are full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom. <laughs> and they chose them from the members. Just come and serve tables. Okay, and you guys, I need party tabernacle next week. You understand? Let me explain. We want to do a party next week. So we want to cook rice. We want to cook rice for the guests. But I want to master I want to really confirm in the money. I want to master Search among yourself. Those who are really full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, search them. They know that will cook the rice. They're not telling them to come and lead worship. Home. Serve tables, serve food. They are the that will cook the rice. They are the that will serve the food to the visitors. That means that church was filled with people, with believers who were on fire for Jesus. And they were in their hundreds of thousands. What was worrying you? You think it's number that brings coldness to a church? It's not number. It is the absence of the presence of God. Yeah. Are you following me? So many times we prefer the number so we chase away God's presence so that the people can quickly come. You know, some of you that have, that, that have been here since the beginning of, of this church, you know, you know that if we did church in the way God does not want us to do it, we would have, we would have we would, maybe we would have almost been filled up. If we accepted some things, are you following me? Are you with me now, my friends? If we did church casually, church as usual, are you following me? Ah, uh, you by my defense. You know it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking of juju, I'm not talking of that. We just do church as usual. Everybody just come as you are, stay as you are, go as you are, remain, don't change, just stay as you are, you are okay. Are you following me? But there's a pattern that God has given us. And there's something that is more important to us than the people. 
What is that thing? The presence of God. So we are concerned about God being in our midst than, hey, don't let these people live, oh. 20 people, don't let them live, oh. Don't mind your call, oh. What was that? So you know, you know some churches, because they don't want some people to live, so they alter the presence of God. They arrange church to accommodate people, but not accommodate God's presence. So eventually, the church is filled up. Are you following me? But the people are weak. The church cannot do anything for God. The church is not a church to Satan. The church cannot save the city. So, so Satan is not even afraid of the church because you see, Satan is not even, Satan is not trying to get people out of that church because he knows the people inside the church uh, are as good as the people inside the coven. There are people in the, as good as people in the bear parlor. Satan even ties them in church that they will have the, the sense of being religious. So that if you preach Christ to them, I'm beginning to tell them about the Christian life. I say, you, I already go to, I go to a church. You understand? I go to a church. I'm even a worker. I'm a worker. Can you hear me? So Satan is happy with them, with that church being 100,000 members. All of them are dead. The pastor is almost dead. He is not fully dead. <laughs> He's half dead. Satan is not, he's happy. Satan keeps sending men to that church. Are you following me? Are you following me? Because if they are not in church, they might quickly remember that something is wrong with their life. <laughs> are you following me? They might quickly remember that they need Jesus. So, but being in church, they already think they have Jesus. They think they don't, they, they don't need anything. So when you are talking to them, begin to teach them about the Christian life, about the Lord and all of that. They tell you, they thought you can tell me, Mr. If I, I go to church, I'm even a worker. I'm the HOD of media in my church. Are you following me? But don't forget, the church has been altered. And I'm not saying it's every church that has crowd. I'm just teaching. Because this church, we are going to have the presence of God. We are going to have the Spirit, His presence, His glory. And we are, going to, we are going to have the crowd. I'm telling you the truth. We are going to have the crowd. And the crowd will be a people of His glory. See, Something new is happening in the air too. Are you following me? A new generation is rising now. The weak church is going into extinction. No more weakness in the church of God. Why can't we have one million members and they are all on fire? Why is it a crime? Why can't they be on fire? Is it not individual? Are you following me? Why can't we have believers on fire? But we are going to have believers on fire in this church. In the hundreds of thousands. All of, all of them on fire, loving Jesus. Are you following me? And that is why, presently, the presence of God is the most important thing to us. Because only God's presence can change people's lives. Are you following me? Only God's glory can transform people's lives. Because you see, what a people need to commit themselves to God, to be sold out completely to God, are you following me? Is an encounter with his glory, a continuous experience with his, with his glory and his presence. So if the people come to a church, are you following me? And they can't find God's glory and church, and they can't find his glory and his presence, they can remain in that church, but they will not be changed. Are you following me? And if they are not changed, God does not have a people in them. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So you find churches altering, altering things to accommodate the people instead of focusing on the present because they want the people. You see, we must appreciate as God's people, are we together? As, as God's people in this church, we must appreciate the fact that the most important thing, what we want earnestly is what? The presence of God. Every other thing will come, my friends. I'm telling you the truth. Are you following me? So, and if you want the presence of God, which is our greatest vision, his presence must be amongst us in our lives, in our families, in our marriages. Are you following me? If you want his presence, there's a way you have to be. There's a way you have to behave. Are you following me? That behavior will now make you different from other people. Do not be insulting you. Don't worry, don't let me rush. Now I feel like it's only you that wants God. Or say we know God. And it's at this point that some of you change your mind about destiny. When there's no more acceptance. Are you following now, my friends? Praise Jesus, save them all. Shout hallelujah. So, sometimes the vision God puts in the heart of your pastor is unique and has no reference points. 
So we must appreciate the uniqueness of the vision God has put in the heart of the pastor. Are you following me? Are you with me? So, members of a church, as members of this church, members of a church, we must do what? Appreciate the uniqueness of the vision that God has put in the heart of your pastor. We must appreciate it. We must do what? Appreciate it. Appreciate. <laughs> we must appreciate it. Abi, we are we are the retreat. We are the exams all true. We are the retreat online. Yes, it is. Okay, okay. Praise Jesus. No, it's not generally online, it's for workers. So as we you are as we you are worker worker. <laughs> you are worker. Uh, Okay, so you're automatically working here too, right? <laughs> no, she has the exam. She has the exam. No, don't cast her. Abby is the worker. She's, she's workers. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. So, you must appreciate what? The uniqueness of the vision God has put in that of what? Your pastor. Can I talk to you? See? So, Moses began to talk to people about this vision. They had not seen it before. It was a unique vision. Are you following me? You see? Others, outsiders can criticize your church. Are you following me? For its difference, but you must appreciate your difference. The uniqueness. Imagine when most began to speak to the people, and you guys say, wow, God has spoken to me. He has shown me a vision, a sanctuary, so let us build for him a sanctuary. You know what Moses, Pastor Moses, what are you saying, sir? San- what's the sanctuary? We have not seen it before. You started with all this, your, your stuff again. Don't stress us. What is a Wotoni sanctuary by? Can't we build what everybody is building? Don't stress us. We join in sanctuary. We've not. Are you following me? Oh, so we begin, begin to talk to you. Say, this is our pastor said. His own is too much. See the way other churches are doing. Him is saying his sanctuary he wants to build. He's want to build sanctuary. Which sanctuary is he building? Say, oh, we shall support him, but our pastor, you shall more. Are you with me? Like that, you are not appreciating the, the uniqueness of the vision. Okay, can I tell you the truth? If you behave like that, it will be beautiful, but you won't be part of it. Are you with me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So, we must appreciate the uniqueness of the vision that God put in the heart of our pastor. So, as a member of this church, you must do what? Appreciate the uniqueness of the vision that God puts what? In the heart of your pastor. Are you still with me? Guys, are you with me? If you are going to, because, are you with me? If you are going to fulfill the destiny of God, the purpose of God, you must walk the path of difference. Can I talk to you? Our church will be different. Don't forget, don't make a mistake. When I say difference, I didn't say better. Difference is not better, does not make you better. Difference just means this is who you are, this is what they've called you to be. This is how they've called you to do. Are you with me? I'm not saying our church is better than any church or will be better than any church. Are you following me? I'm just saying our, our church is different. What God has called us to do is different. Eh? Can you hear me? No, we are different. Some of you have been in some churches before. If you will not lie to yourself, you will say the truth that Glory Center Community Church as a whole it's different. Is it not different? It's different. And some of you who have been in this church, you find that there's something different about this church. It's different. Are you following me? Why is it different? We are not different because we want to be different. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't ever forget. That kind of difference will be carnal. It's pride. We are different because God has shown us a vision. Are you with me? He has us to build a sanctuary that we accommodate his presence. Hmm? So we are pursuing the building of the sanctuary that we house the presence of God. Are you following me? And as a result of that, it has put us on a path of difference. Are you following me? So it is the load that God has put on us. It is the vision he has shown us. It is the destiny he has, he has given us that has made us what? Different. That has put difference on us. How can I talk to you? Doesn't mean every church has to be behave like our church. Hmm? Are you following me? But I think every church should pursue the presence of God. I think so. 
Are you following? But, every, but even though you are pursuing God's presence, everybody might have their unique way of doing church service and doing church. Are you following me? But what we want to arrive in is what? God's presence. So for us, this is what He has told us to be. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. And the truth is that no two churches are the same. Hmm? No two churches are what? No two churches are the same. So yeah, I'm not even talking, I'm not talking of better. Better has entered comparison. Are you following me? That you are better than this one. His carnality is sinful. The Bible says you are a fool. He said those who compare themselves with themselves are fools. So we are not comparing ourselves with any church. Are you following me? You are not comparing your life with anybody. You are just fulfilling your destiny and it makes you different. Are you following me? I'll get there next week. And this difference makes a lot of people angry. <laughs> Guys, can I talk to you? When you choose, when you decide to begin to walk in a path of destiny, people will be angry with you. Are you with me? People will be what? They'll be offended. They'll be offended. Because the path of destiny always puts you in the spot, spotlight of difference. You'll just be different. Are you with me? But you must appreciate your difference. So as members of this church, you must appreciate what? Our difference. You must appreciate the uniqueness of our vision. Of the vision of God in our hands. We must appreciate it. We must love it. We must treasure it. So someone comes to talk to you, ah, that your church self. Why are you always going to church two times on Sunday? Sunday morning, Sunday evening. You should say, ah, I don't know. I don't know. This way me go. You don't appreciate your difference. Are you following me? He said, I don't even know. You don't know. <laughs> eh, Pastor, you said that's how we're doing it, and that's how we're doing it. You don't know. Talk to me. What, what? Can I ask you? Why are we doing church the way we are doing it? His presence. And that's the way He's showing us. That's the way He's showing us. Are you following me? That's the way He has shown us how to do. Now, it's not every, if not every church, it's not every great center community church that does church Sunday morning or Sunday evening. You know? Are you following me? All of them have, all of us, all of us as a whole, as great center community church, we have a unique vision. We have one vision we are pursuing, the presence of God, a people for God. Raising a people for God. That will love Him, that will pursue Him, that will be committed. Are you following me? His presence. Are you following me? But again, in each church, great center community church, are you following me? There is something God has also shown them as a route to that, pre- to that what? presence, to, that, to fulfilling that vision. I mean, they, they do at the upper that we don't do. Things like Badon Church do that we don't do. I think Badon Church does is it some prayers every Friday or something. Um, what do you call it? Prayer school or something. I don't do prayer school. God, no, God not tell me to do prayer school. <laughs> Are you with me? Maybe if God tells me. He didn't tell me to do prayer school. Pastor, where in Ibadan? I've seen in God's heart that God will have them do prayer school. He's there every Friday or so. Are you following me? Are you with me? As a route, are you, as one of the things that He requires for them to bring down His presence, to house His presence, and transform the people into God's people. You know now, dear quarters, there's worship every Thursday. Why else we are here doing Bible study, our middle service? They are doing worship every Thursday at headquarters. Are you with me? Are you with me? That's part of the things they've seen. That okay, this is what God is requiring. Are you with me now, my friends? Shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus forevermore. Amen. I'm trying to say to you that there's something God requires from every church. Are you following me? Which will bring them into their destiny. There's something God requires of your life. Which will bring them into your destiny. And that's something that He requires. Are you following me? Will put you on the path of difference. So I'm not saying churches who don't do Sunday morning service, then come back in the evening again at 5.30. I'm not saying they are not good churches. Otherwise, it means that our white quarter is not serious. Because they, will, they don't meet Sunday morning and come back in the evening. It means that bad on church is not serious. It means that, you understand? For now, I think it's even this branch that does service Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Are you following me? 
So, are you with me? It's a, it's a difference, but it's not better. It's not that it's better. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Are you with me now? Are you with me? I'm talking about you appreciating the uniqueness of the vision God has put in the heart of your pastor. So they ask you, you people are imagining the church in your son, the only Sunday you are going to church twice. Is it church you want to die? Ah, myself. You don't appreciate the vision. You don't appreciate your difference. Are you following me? Even if you don't understand, you don't really understand, you say, ah, that is how it is in our church and we are enjoying it. Your response must show to people that you appreciate your uniqueness. Are you following me? People must find it hard to despise your church before your face, in your presence. Are you following me? They are using your, dis- your difference to despise you. They must find it hard to do. But it only be hard to do because they will try it once. Because they don't know what your response will be. But they, will tr- they can come and try it once. But that once, your response now determines if they will continue or not in your own face. Are you following me? And one most important thing that will determine your response is whether, is whether or not you appreciate the uniqueness of the vision in the heart of your pastor or not. What time your response is whether or not you appreciate the difference, the path that God has set your church on. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me now, my friends? Friends, you must appreciate the uniqueness of your church. Are you with me? You know why I'm emphasizing that I'm not talking about better? Because you must not fall into, into the trap of comparing your church with other churches and saying that your church is better. Are you with me? Is deeper life not different from this our church? Are we better or are they better? Which one is better? No one. Everyone is working in their uniqueness. Everyone is working in what? In the uniqueness of their purpose. Winners, is it the same? Is it the same vibe? Is it the same culture? Is it the, are, you, are you following me? But this church is, as far as I know, they're in pursuit of the glory of God, His presence, right? But they do church. Even winners is even from deeper life. <laughs> is that not true? Are you with me? But they do church in a way that is unique to them as God has shown them. Are you with me? Which will lead them, which is the route to the fulfillment of what God has shown them. But they are not better than anybody. You understand? So, I'm, I'm trying to make us appreciate what I'm talking about. Don't compare our church with other churches and say our church is better. Our church is not better. Hmm? But we must not be afraid to be different. We are different and must not be what? Afraid to be different. We must not be afraid to embrace our difference. Can I talk to you? You are a different person. Because of what God has put upon your life, I must not be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to embrace your difference. Guys, can, guys, can I talk to you? If you are afraid of difference, you will alter your identity. You hear me? If you are afraid of difference, you will what? Alter your identity. Hey, can I say that again? If you are afraid of difference, you will what? You will alter your identity. And once you alter your identity, are you following me? You have slaughtered your destiny. Did you hear me? Once what? Once you alter your identity, you have slaughtered your destiny. Friends, can I still talk to you? I said, if you are, if you are afraid of what? Of difference. Uh, are you with me? You will what? You will alter your identity. <laughs> Did you hear that? And if you alter your identity, you will alter your destiny. Can you hear me? Oh, friends, are you still with me this morning? Don't worry, I'll soon close. I'll pick it up next week. Can you hear me? But let me just stay on this first statement and, and, and we close. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. If you are afraid of different, you will what? You will alter your identity. And if you alter your identity, you will slaughter your destiny. Once you alter your identity, you will slaughter destiny. Do you know why? 
Because destiny is attached to identity. <laughs> Did you hear me? Destiny is what? Destiny is attached to identity. Are you following me? Destiny is attached to identity. So, there's an identity God has given you in order to be able to fulfill the destiny He has given you. Are you following me? So, you are, you are on a journey towards destiny. Uh, but your vehicle for that journey, what is pro- propelling you in that journey is your identity, which is the uniqueness of, of the vision. Are you following me? That is the driving force into your destiny. So once that identity is altered, you can no longer make progress into destiny. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. So, God had to alter the identity of Jacob. Are you following me? Because that identity is not in sync with destiny. Are you with me? He had to what? Alter his identity because there's a destiny that God has put upon his life. Are you following me? That that identity is not in sync with. So if he continues with that identity, he won't fulfill destiny. So God met with him. He said, I won't let you go unless you bless me. He said, okay, what is your name? My name is Jacob. Your name is Jacob. Okay. Your name will no longer be called Jacob. But what? Israel. How can... What did Jacob ask for? Talk to me. What did Jacob ask for? Blessing. What did God give him? A change of name. Talk to me. How can a change of name be blessing? Have you thought of it? You came to me tonight and you said, Pastor, please bless me. Pastor, bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Let's say I'm God. He said, God, bless me. Bless me. Pastor, bless me. And I said, what's your name? He said, Missy. Your name will no longer be Missy. Your name will not be Liar. You still be telling me, Pastor, bless me. Because you are one day. I said, bless me. You see, be saying I should bless you. Continue in prayer. Is that not true? Because I'm wondering. I say, Pastor, bless me, bless me. I say, My name will no longer be named. My name will not be liar. What are you saying? So, how do you equate a change of name to be blessing? Are you following me? The man asks for blessing. They change his name. Are you following me? Because I told you, name is not just nomenclature, name is identity. Are you following me? So they altered his name. Are you following me? Because they wanted to alter his identity. Are you with me? They wanted to give him an identity that is compatible with the destiny they have, they have, they have ordained for him. Are you with me? So your identity, are you with me? Your identity is the proof of ownership of your destiny. Oh, you didn't hear me. Are you following me? Your what? Your identity, that identity God has given you. Which people want to make you alter, which situation want to make you alter, is actually the proof of ownership of your destiny. So, if you are trying to walk towards destiny, and you've lost your identity, destiny calls you a thief, that you're a thief, you want to steal me. They arrest you. No proof of ownership. Guys, can you still hear me? That was why Esau could no longer get the blessing, because identity had been altered. Are you following me? The identity for the blessing is firstborn. It's birthright. Are you with me? Uh, in that story, the identity for the blessing is what? Is birthright. Is firstborn. Are you following me? So whoever has that identity is the owner of the blessing. Uh, so Esau altered the identity. He sold his birthright. He threw the bed right away. He lost the identity, but on paper, he was still firstborn. Uh, so when it was time for the blessing, he thought it was paper. He thought it was best certificate that would give you the blessing. No, it is identity. So when it was time for the blessing, it was the person that has the identity that got the blessing. Are you following me? Jacob did not get the blessing because they put ram skin on his, on his, on his body. He didn't get the blessing because they put his first clothes on him. No, no, no. He got the blessing because he now had the identity. Are you with me? Why did he get the blessing? He now has the identity. He now has the identity. See, there's a blessing, there's a destiny that God has put upon our church and upon your life. Are you following me? That if we alter our identity, we won't be able to fulfill it. Are you getting blessed? Do you want me to continue? If you want me to continue, say, Pastor, continue. 
Tell me, do you want me to continue? Tell me, do you want me to continue? Say it loud, let me hear. All of you are old people. Let me talk to my new, let, 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 let me talk to my new member. So I know, I will, you are yeah, telling me to continue, will you still come back? Yeah. Hey, you are not that I continue. <laughs> but let me ask you, before you say, ah, pastor, pastor, when last week, Timo Loy, oh, you will be my Lolenio. Should I close? It's only, it's only you are we ask. Are you enjoying it? Is it blessing you? So I should continue. You still give me like 10 minutes, I'll be 15. How many? I should continue till like 3 o'clock. <laughs> if I go. I think about Wele, Cook, Lele, I won't be in Wele. This one wants to close out by 9.30. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. Let me find a, a, a good place to land. Ah, oh, massive. Let me, let me just, let me pause it. The flow is, I want to finish this statement. But well, this one says, so I'm still not that's what I'm talking about. Are you following me? So to fulfill destiny is an identity. Ah, uh, so as a church, are you following me? There's a destiny God has, God has ordained for us from his realms to be manifested in the realms of the earth. Are you following me? And that destiny is attached to an identity. So God has put on us the identity for that destiny. And that is the difference. Hmm? The identity is what? It's our difference. It's the route to the vision. To the fulfillment of the vision. So if we alter our identity as a church, we won't be able to fulfill the vision that God has put in our heart. We'll be able to fulfill our destiny as a church. That's why you must appreciate your difference as a church. You must appreciate the vision God has put in the heart of your pastor. You must appreciate the difference of your church. So if they ask you, why do we do church Sunday morning, Sunday evening? It's because of something we are pursuing. We have a destiny in God. And that's what I have shown us how to do. Are you following me, my friends? Why do we pray Sunday month, Sunday evening? Why do we pray one hour then do Bible study for one hour? That is the route you are showing us. Why do we spend a lot of time st- studying the Bible on Thursday? That is what how you are showing us. Why do we do worship last Sunday of the month in the evening? That's what he has shown us. That's the route. Are you with me now, my friends? Why do we behave this way? Why, why do we do church as family? Why is church family? Because that's the number one. That's the way church, church is. And that's what he has shown us. Guys, don't alter your identity. Don't what? Don't alter. I can see I'm, I'm having a very strong flow. And it only means one thing. You people are, 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 are pulling it out. I want to be a good pastor. I want to close. But I've not yet finished that first point, Seth. I can feel the flow so much. It just, and the meaning. See, a man of God can sense when people are not hearing him again. People are still hearing me. But I want to, I want to close. I don't want to, I don't want to keep you. Because you are coming back in the evening. Praise God forevermore. But you know I don't send you. I can close by 12. <laughs> but I'll close because of Tommy. Today's our first time. So she won't that pastor is a bad person. Tommy, it is you. Can you, can you appreciate Tommy, Tommy for me? I mean, I mean, how many people love Tommy? Can you say Tommy, we love you? Say Tommy, we love you. Are you a part of this family? You are a part, right? It is your family. So friends, don't alter your identity. So there's an identity we have as a church. It has put us on the path of different. You understand what I'm trying to say to you? Let me make this statement and, and, I'll, and I'll pick it up from here next week. So we must be bold and courageous to carry out the vision no matter how different it might appear. Do you understand what I said? We must be bold and courageous to carry out the vision no matter how different what we appear. So one thing that is needful, this one will continue from next week by God's grace. One thing that is needful, needed for you, if you're going to fulfill destiny, and God has put an identity on you, which will make you different. One thing you need to fulfill the vision is boldness and courage. 
when God puts you on a path of difference, you need to be bold and courageous to fulfill your destiny. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. I'll see you again in the evening. God bless you.